Doug Black. I'm editor in chief at Inside HPC, and today at Virtual ISC, we're speaking with Brock Taylor. He is Global HPC Solutions Director at AMD. Brock, welcome. Thanks, Doug. Since AMD's March introduction of the Epic Seven Thousand Three Seven Nanometer CPUs. Uh, we've seen its adoption by many server manufacturers in the HPC industry. Please give us an overview of, of the Epic's reception in the marketplace. It's been fantastic. Uh, it is a, a fantastic part um, that's built on our Zen architecture that has steadily become a, a very strong player in the HPC market over the, the past few years. So when we look at the improvements from our previous generation, uh, we added things like uh, cache enhancement or changes to how we do the, the compute die that goes onto the chip. So specifically from our Zen 2 architecture, the previous generation to the current generation, we went from having four cores share 16 megabytes of L3 cache to eight cores that share 32 meg of cache. And when you put that together, it ultimately uh, helps with some of the HPC application needs and the improvements that we've had in just overall performance, uh, how the, the chiplets are connected, uh, really has been a compelling case that's, that's really helped fuel demand and growth in its application to high performance computing. And, and the, the proof is really coming in pretty strong. So today, I think we've, we've surpassed over 200 world records with the, the Zen 3 architecture and the, the latest Epic chip. And that includes uh, records in floating, port, floating point performance, as well as over 30 HPC application world records. So you're talking about broad applicability that we see not just in high-end data centers, but uh, everyday use in high-performance computing. So we, we are getting more and more and expect to be a part of the what we hope is the world's first exascale class supercomputing uh, deployment later this year, but as well, we're in everyday use cases from from car designing better cars, fuel efficient airplanes, uh, but as well as manufacturing cost reduction, uh, even movie production. The movie studios are seeing huge uplift in what they can do in visual effects and how many movies they can actually do per year based on what Zen 3 is actually delivering in the latest Epic architecture. Yeah, lots of attention around Epic, certainly. Now, moving over on the GPU side, uh, update us on Instinct, if you would, and highlight some of its key attributes and why you think it's a good choice for the HPC community. First off, uh, our latest Instinct line is, has actually crossed the goal line of, of 10 teraflops and FB64 performance, right? So again, you're seeing a lot of fine tuning towards high performance computing that ultimately gets, gets rooted in taking our general architecture for GPU and then making, splitting it into more focused areas. So we have uh, basically the compute side and the graphic side. And when you can take that architecture and then allow it to, to have one focus that focuses on the graphics and one side that focuses on the compute power, we're able to take out the things that we don't need for high performance computing or acceleration of HPC applications and really target that architecture, what is in our instinct line for the data center at providing just the compute power. And that gives you more of that uh, power and performance attributes that are needed in the data center and help accelerate some of the common applications. And so we're continuing to work on how to get those applications ported over to use our Rockham stack, which is what takes best advantage of that architecture, but provide the developers the ability to use open source standards and encoding mechanisms so they're not locked into any architecture. And that really helps fuel the growth and and transfer of, of codes over from CPU to really efficient GPU land. And when you pair those two together and add AMD's Infinity Fabric, we're also providing that, that data highway that helps move data between CPU and GPU, as well as GPU to GPU, and really capture a lot of performance that helps fuel demand. So what other initiatives might we expect from AMD in HPC over the next 12 to 18 months? 
Well, one of those is uh, is along the lines of helping researchers and helping code developers port their codes to GPU or take advantage of this hardware acceleration. So we've just launched an AMD initiative aimed at educators and researchers to make sure that they're getting the tools they need and, and the, the information they need to start moving those codes and porting those codes in a way that they're going to capture that value, but also keep that value as they move forward and maintain those codes. That's that's literally called IAER. You can go to amd.com slash IAER and find information. And then that will help point you to the resources that AMD provides to help make it easier for developers to move to use the instinct line in their, their coding. Okay, so uh, now looking at Exascale, uh, AMD of course is heavily involved in two of the first U.S. exascale systems, including front Frontier, scheduled for installation later this year at Oak Ridge. Uh, please give us an update on your work with your technology partners and the national labs in the exascale area. Yeah, so it, it's uh, it's obviously it's very complex to deliver uh, that type of machine in a world class leadership machine. Uh, it definitely involves. Uh, the, the pairing of CPU and GPU and the infinity fabric as well between them, as I mentioned, moving data around and really being able to respond to whatever the workload need is uh, for that, that particular use case, right? So it's, it, it involves uh, a lot of AMD software as well. So as we're delivering the drivers and the performance libraries that the developers of the codes that will run on these machines need to achieve the scalability and the, the raw performance of scaling out across that many nodes takes a lot of effort and collaboration between our side, uh, the systems vendors, and the developers themselves to actually attain the performance uh, that we're going to get out of that system. So it, it's really, it is a long journey and one that continues as well after deployment uh, that will continue on, but the investments that we're able to make in, in getting to Exascale and getting to that system actually allow us to take that, uh, that investment and propagate it across not just that system, but all of HPC. And so we look at, at those elements of what we deliver and what we're doing in Exascale and continue to fuel future generations as well. So again, the, the pairing of CPU and GPU and how they're going to share memory, I think we're already looking at uh, how that innovation comes in and in pairing with uh, basically shared memory and more coherent memory between CPU and GPU. Okay, an interesting range of challenges there. Um, so Absolutely. now looking at ISC, um, what will be your focus at this year's conference? What are some of the major activities you'll be involved in? Yeah, well, as you said, it's, it's virtual, so you can stop by our virtual booth and you'll be able to learn more about the latest Epic and the latest Instinct products, uh, as well as some of the initiatives we're doing around Exascale in the, the future. Um, you can expect to, to see and learn more information about the different things that we're doing with these national centers of excellence uh, around the globe, as well as some of the, the codes that we've optimized and some announcements around uh, the tools and, and different developer products that we're providing to make it easier to take best advantage of AMD architecture. And that includes the, the academic educator and research initiative uh, that I mentioned earlier. So you'll be able to learn more information about how to get those, those resources and those that tooling that developers need to best take advantage. All right. Well, uh, Brock, it was great to spend some time with you and I wish you all the best success at ISC. Thank you. Excellent. It was great to talk to you. Thanks. the provider of software and cloud solutions for simulation, IoT, HPC, data analytics, and AI, and with AMD, which in March announced its new Epic Milan 7003 series uh, seven nanometer CPUs. We have with us today two representatives of the company. We have from Altair, Eric Lakinu, who he is vice president of Radios Development and Altair Solver HPC, and Kevin Mayo. He is AMD's Director of High Performance Computing Solutions Engineering. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for having us. Hi, Doug. 
So Kevin, let's start with you. We know AMD and Altair have worked together for many years. Uh, tell us about the latest work the two companies are engaged in now and how the new third generation Epic CPU architecture supports data and compute intensive applications like Altair's. Thank you again for having us today. Sure. Um, it, uh, it's been a, a great time to be at AMD over the last few years. And uh, one, of the, one of the best things about that from my role is working with great partners like Altair. Um, Eric in particular has been a fantastic uh, person to work with as has everyone else at Altair. Um, so I wanted to thank them for that partnership. Um, the Epic in general came through as a uh, kind of a throughput focused processor. So be it the high core count, be it the high cache, et cetera. And, and also the high memory channels, it's able to uh, just crank through a lot of data via a memory bandwidth intensive application or a compute intensive application, uh, you name it. So all of those characteristics came together exceptionally well uh, running Altair's products. So we've done uh, probably the, the most work on Radios and AccuSolve, but also working on, on uh, other applications and not just uh, tweaking and tuning how they run, but tweaking and tuning um, how they how they work internally. So working with Eric and, and his team on um, optimizing use of different uh, math routines, et cetera, um, continuing uh, continuing to get better as we go down that path. Yeah, that's interesting because I noticed in your support materials, it appears there's a great deal of flexibility in the types of Altair applications that AMD supports. Tell us about how the two companies work together on this and how you evaluated the recommended Epic models by workload. When Epic came into the market originally, it had certain advantages and, uh, and um, areas that we, we could get better. And so as we've gone through the first generation and the second generation, now the third generation, we've closed those gaps and in general have very good performance about across just about uh, any HPC workload uh, out there. And so uh, what that's allowed us to do um, working with folks like Altair is to take advantage of, of, uh, of all of that compute power, all of that throughput capabilities I mentioned. And um, we've, uh, we've been able to take the standard models that Altair uses, using those as, as examples. We have uh, large clusters internally that uh, we bring in their applications, we run through their benchmarks, we uh, do performance profiling, um, analyzing which processors fit best to each application and not just from a performance standpoint, but from a performance per dollar standpoint, uh, performance per watt, et cetera. So we can take those workloads, really go through a deep analysis, um, looking at, and I think some of the reference material you mentioned has uh, some of the analysis in there, uh, not just looking at the performance of the product, but um, trying to find the sweet spot uh, if, you're, if you're paying a, a software license per core, trying to find the best per core performance and balancing that with the overall um, per node kind of time to solution. So uh, striking that right balance from time to solution to uh, performance per core um, is important in HPC and especially on, on uh, uh, commercial codes. And um, like I guess mentioned a couple of times now, Alter has been a great partner to help us uh, help us optimize that and and do great things for the customers. Yeah, I'm sure customers really appreciate that. So, Eric, let's turn to you uh, from Alter's perspective. Talk about some of the key advantages that AMD Epic chips offer uh, Alter customers using your solvers. Good question. In, in fact, since uh, AMD made his comeback in the HPC with its first generation of Epic processor we continuously observe tremendous performance improvement running Altair solvers. With uh, the second generation Epic and now with the third generation Epic processor. For Altair customers, this means that uh, they have the ability to decrease time to solution using this type of processors. So to address more complex problems, to do more experiments, something very important in the context of uh, optimization of products. So for example, in automotive, to allow to improve both the safety and the CO2 emissions for safer on greener vehicles, thanks to Alter simulation driven design tools. So more precisely, the, the good balance between the, the CPU core performance and the memory bandwidth with the eight memory channels of the AMD EPIC, together with the increased number of cores per CPU socket, 
up to 64 cores are two critical aspects for this performance improvement running Alter simulation solvers. Okay, great, thank you. The, um, now looking at uh, specifically at Radios and AccuSolve, uh, tell, talk about the performance characteristics and advantages with uh, Epic, the, the new Epic 7003 series. So, so first, just to recall that uh, Radios is our leading analysis solution to evaluate and optimize product performance for highly nonlinear problems under dynamic loadings. It is used worldwide since more than 30 years across many industries, mainly automotive, aerospace, defense, electronics, consumer goods, to improve crashworthiness, safety, and manufacturability of complex designs. And uh, Radius is well known with uh, its uh, very high parallel efficiency, uh, one of the few industrial code aimed to scale up to several thousand of cores indeed. So here in this study, uh, we focus on two standard uh, models, so frontal car crash models, a small one with one million elements, mainly to check a single node performance, and another one of 10 million of elements which is representative of today model at uh, auto OEMs. So well designed to test multi-node scalability as it is a really compute intensive uh, type of simulation. So here we tested uh, three uh, AMD EPIC processors. So the 74F3, the 75F3 and the 7543. So as expected, the 75F3 delivers the best performance thanks to higher number of cores, so 32 cores per socket, and higher CPU frequency. But indeed, the, the performance gap between the, the 75F3 and the 7543 is relatively small, around 5-6%. So the, the 7543 is uh, really interesting to maximize per watt uh, performance. So we, oh. we also uh, tested the multi-node multi scalability. So with the 75S3, uh, which shows a very good efficiency with a speed up of 3.86 over four nodes. So something around uh, 96 plus uh, percent of uh, efficiency over 256 cores. So then we, uh, we expanded the test to AccuSolve uh, which is a part of Alter CFD offer, a comprehensive set of tools for to solve uh, fluid mechanics problems. So AccuSolve is our general purpose Navier stock solver. It is massively scalable and benefits from GPU acceleration too. So for uh, AccuSolve, we run a standard model which simulates an impinging nozzle with uh, more than 7 million of grids using Sparlat Almaraz turbulence model. Again, we tested uh, three types of EPIC processors, the 74F3, 75F3, and 7543. But uh, this type of problem is mostly sensitive to, to memory bandwidth to solve a linear equation based on flow and turbulence matrices. So what is really key here is rather the eight memory channel available on the EPIC. So in fact, all the CPU models showed extremely good and comparable performance and the additional cores uh, do not play a sensitive impact here. However, we, we plan to test some uh, other CFD workloads, which could better benefit from additional core count and better suited for multi-node performance. And uh, to conclude on this study, uh, if one wants to, to select a common platform for running uh, Alter radios, AccuSolve, as well as also other solvers like OptiStruct for structural analysis and FECO for electromagnetism, we are confident that a solution based on the EPIC 75F3 or 7543 will be really efficient with a very good compromise between the per core efficiency, the single node best performance and the multi-node scalability. Okay, great. Great stuff, great overview. Thank you. The uh, So Eric and Kevin, uh, Great to be with you today. Best of luck. And I hope you have a great ISC. Yeah, thanks a lot, Doug. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time.